Merry Christmas and welcome to worship at Pomacia Presbyterian Church on Sunday, December the 26th. This is the Sunday after Christmas and this year it falls quite literally the day after Christmas. So being here together online may be a great way to be able to recover a bit from yesterday and share in worship together today. I'm glad that you could join us We'll be hearing some of the carols that sing about the gift of God with us. We'll be sharing in the reading of the Word. We'll be praying together. I hope that you'll comment or email us to let us know of your presence. And please know that we're thinking of you. And as we lift up our prayers, we're praying for your home, for your life, for your loved ones particularly. This has been a difficult December in so many ways for so many people. And so it's important that we hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. On uh, this day, we join with the church around the world as we celebrate this Sunday in Christmas tide. Welcome.
scripture reading for the Sunday after Christmas comes from the letter to the Colossians, the third chapter, verses 12 through 17. This is the lectionary epistle reading for this day, it is being used by churches around the world as we share together in the reading and hearing of God's Word. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we share together on this Sunday after Christmas, I am grateful to all who have been a part of preparing and planning and implementing the worship services here at Pomacea Presbyterian Church. Let me say thank you. In our services in the sanctuary, I certainly didn't expect that we would have the biggest crowd all year today. After all, it is the day after Christmas. But I'm so grateful for those who have done this work to make this online service possible and that they have made also possible the services at 9 o'clock and at 11 o'clock and the Vesper service on this day as well at the sanctuary. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who has been a part of the Christmas generosity that has flowed forth from this congregation. I'm happy to share with you the news that we have reached our stewardship goal for 2022. Thank you to everybody who turned in a pledge. What an outstanding effort this was. And in addition to that, the gifts that came in through the giving tree, the people who have brought forward presents for our partner agencies that we have shared with and caring for vulnerable families and children in this community, the gifts that came in for the joy gift offering, which we are using in support of the Bethel ministry to farm workers. This has been an abundance that warms my heart. I see how in the letter to the Colossians, the apostle tells us to put on these characteristics. Uh, the metaphor brings to my mind rising in the morning, the way in which the first thing you do when you rise up in the morning is to put on clothes for the day ahead. But the apostle calls for us, and the day after Christmas is a good day to begin practicing, to put on the characteristics, the virtues of the Christian life as we enter into the day. Kindness, humility, meekness, compassion. Intentionally put on these things as the way in which you hope to engage with the world. Now I know a lot of energy is expended over Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and likely some of you watching this are tired. And if you're parents of small children, you may be especially tired. So I want to remind you that the epistle calls for us to forgive each other. In verse 13 it says, bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so also you must forgive. Forbearance is one of those virtues that we put on, and this may be a good day to forbear someone, to overlook an irritating fault, to go the second mile with them as a way of practicing the gratitude we feel for what God has done in Jesus Christ. We also find in this Colossians passage an exhortation to sing, to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And Christmas time is certainly a time when there's a lot of music, a lot of beautiful music, and appropriately so. The great American theologian Reinhold Niebuhr once said that as we drew closer and closer to Christmas Eve and to Christmas Day in the stable, pastors should step further and further away from the pulpit and let the choir carry the message. So this service is dominated today 
by the music of Christmas. I think Christmas carols are their own witness, and they are witnessing to the good news of what God has done in Jesus Christ. The lyrics themselves are often interpretations of the Scriptures. I remember attending a lecture once when I was in college, and the professor was um, talking to us. He was a biographer of John Calvin from Switzerland, there as a visiting professor. And he was talking to us about the Christmas story in the Gospel of Luke and Calvin's interpretation of it and the different roles that Calvin saw the characters playing. And then he took questions and one of the students asked him, what role in the story do you see the reader playing today? And the professor said, the role that you are called to play is the role shared by the angels. You're to be proclaimers of the good news, proclaimers of that good news to the world. And so, like the angels, perhaps the best form of proclamation that we have is to sing it. So I encourage you in this week ahead, between now and the new year, to listen to the lyrics of the Christmas carols as they interpret the good news of the gospel, and to be willing to share and continuing to sing them, that they might be a part of our witness with the angels to what happened in Bethlehem at the stable 2,000 years ago. Now, please pray with me. God, I lift up the hearts of these good people who share this worship. I'm grateful for the generosity that Christmas has engendered within us. I also acknowledge that there's some fatigue. So I pray that where it's helpful, you would give them rest and help us to put on the virtues of the Christian life, to put on forbearance and forgiveness, to put on patience, to put on kindness, that the good news might be proclaimed not only with our songs, but also with our actions. Hear the personal and private prayers of those who share now together. Give them some sign of encouragement that you hear them. We pray for those who are suffering, for the grieving, for the sick, for the hungry, for those who are homeless and do not know where they will sleep tonight, for those who are in danger, for the anxious. Lord, hear our prayers. We add our prayers to those who are in desperate circumstances and use us as some means of reaching out in Christ's compassion to them. We also thank you especially on this day for those who serve and serve on our behalf, those who are working for the public welfare or serving in hospitals and clinics or at critical services or keeping public safety uh, at the foremost of our cares and concerns. Give them extra energy and keep them safe and bring them home to their families and those who love them as their shifts come to an end. We thank you, Lord, and we make these prayers together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray as his family, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Now go forward into the week ahead in the confidence that you are God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. And in that confidence, clothe yourselves as you engage with the world with patience, with kindness, with compassion, and above all, with love, which binds everything together. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Amen. Thank you.